I'm Miranda and welcome to Books 101. Today I'm reviewing the second installment in Julie Gagawa's Blood of Eden trilogy. So it's been four months since Ali has walked away from Eden. After having walked away from Eden, Ali now sets out to find her master and creator Kanin, who since being her creator is calling to her through this blood bond. Kanin is calling to her because he's been held captive by this psycho vampire Saren. But this call of blood leads Ali back to her old city of New Covington and the Fringe. As well as getting this new call to free Kanin, a new virus is out and about and this one doesn't only kill humans, it kills vampires. The Eternity Cure is a great second instalment. Usually the second book in the series sometimes can be a bit of a downer because the first one can be so good and Immortal Rules was filled with just so much action, a lot going on in terms of events because each chapter would be something and then something and then something. Where the, the Eternity Cure was more straightforward and they were all going after one thing. And the Eternity Cure eagerly makes you await the next book in the series, Forever Song, which is coming out next year and I'm so excited. It's a great second instalment. It jumps straight into it and Julie Kagawa is brilliant at explaining the vampire's point of view. That's the end for the non-spoiler section. Continue watching to be spoiled. If you don't want to be spoiled, click out. So it's been four months since Ellie has walked away from Eden and most importantly Zeke. She sets out on a quest to save Kanin, who is calling to her through this blood bond. This call ends up leading her to Jackal, her vampire brother. And I was actually surprised um, at the return of Jackal in this book. I kind of had enough of him in the Immortal Rules and I thought that's it, okay, we might see him in the, in the last book or something, he might pop up for a visit. But no, we see him in this book and he plays a large part in it. Jackal wants to help find the lab. So in turn, you know, he says, I'll help you find Kanin. Because Jackal wants a cure to end rabbitism. And when they make it to New Covington, it's under this massive kind of rapid attack and humans are no longer humans. They're this weird type of breed. Whoever thought humans would be dangerous. We find out that the New Covington lab shared research with the other lab. Something in the DC lab led to the massive rapid outbreak. Jackal in this book actually grew on me just a tad. I am not saying grew on me a lot, but just a tad. I think the more he started hanging out with Ali, grew to respect people and kind of be a bit nicer you know, and learn that life is not all the floating pit and slaughter. Proves just a bit when Jekyll ends up saving her. Ali's thinking, oh my gosh, he actually saved me. Here's this vampire that, you know, kills people and everything, and he's actually saving me. Saren has stole the red lung virus, and now they have to go to New Covington. New Covington, a new wave of this virus has hit. And just when you think nothing else can happen, Zeke suddenly pops up. Guy just never stays safe. As soon as he's safe, it's like, no, he has to jump out and do something else. Find out that Zeke's actually been looking for her all this time. He's kind of the leader now of this group of other humans that used to be in New Covington, but then that went underground. The outburst of the new red lung virus made the humans turn into animals. Well, mentally. And we actually see that Ali starts to grow um, friendship feelings towards Jackal when she doesn't want Zeke to kill Jackal because Zeke's all about killing Jackal because Zeke's always out there to do anything. And because Ali doesn't want Jackal killed, her and Zeke get into a little fight. They make up and Zeke's like, I wanna start over again. He says that she's different from the other vampires, which she is, but she just doesn't admit it. She doesn't see it. Hey, how Ali just keeps pushing him back. Girl, he's trying to make a move, make the move back. You have the same feelings for him, just go for him. He's excellent, dude. Dude, jeez, I would not turn down Zeke, trust me. Then the three of them make their way to see the Prince of New Covington, and I love when they're making their way to see the Prince, and then Jackal's just like, just look dangerous, you know, as they stroll into the city. And we find out that Prince's secretary or something like that is freaking Stick. I thought I saw the backside of Stick in Immortal Rules and Stick is freaking back. I hate Stick. He has to be one of the most whiny and annoying male characters I have ever read about. So whiny and has to have everything done for him. End up in that position just because he sold Ali as being a vampire. Oh, Prince isn't any better and Zarin pops in and he attacks everyone and nearly kills the king. Zarin escapes. Prince tells Ali, right, if Ali brings Saren back to him, they'll let Kanen go. Does 
Saren may know about the cure. I feel so sorry for Canyon in this book. How in the last book you saw him mysterious and he's strange and you know, he's not that fun to be around. But in this book, just seeing him so lifeless and how he was just a strong vampire. This beaten down vampire was really upsetting. Find out with this new wave of red lung virus that if vampires bite a human, they end up rotting and dying. He goes back and Kenan ends up biting her. Sad in this book when Ali heard music for the first time and Zeke's like, Ali just never heard music before and then he makes her dance with him and then he tells her I want to bring you back to Eden. I'm just like, say yes to me, just go with him, go with him. No, she pushes him away because she knows that if she's hungry she can snap. Ali just give the guy a chance and then she goes back to find stick in her room. He's, you know, bagging her how she's a monster and this and that. I'm just thinking, bite him Ali, you, you bite him and you just Show him what a vampire can do. 260, Ali finally gives in to Zeke and they kiss and they, you know, you know. And it's just, ah, I'm a vampire, I'm a human, I don't care anymore. Unless you don't feel the same. Ah, finally! This looks like just sort of like a roller coaster. Prince poisoned the blood that was given to Kanin. Now they have three days to find Saffron. I love it when they're going out of the prince's city and Zeke just punches Stick. And it's just the best moment ever. Finally, someone shut the guy up. But as we're traveling, Zeke gets a call from the humans that are kept below ground. And then Kanin makes the choice that yes, he'll go along with them to save them. Then Jack leaves because he finds out that Kanin is sick. Like I said, the roller coaster. Zeke is bitten by the new virus. Oh my god. Now Ali's traveling with two sick people. And then I just hate him because he's, you know, coughing up blood and all that. It's just like, oh my god. He gets into the van and I just think this is it. I'm never going to see Zeke again. Her and Kanin go out, you know, to see if they can finally find this Saren. And they do. He ties down Ali and, you know, puts Kanin in a cell and he's just like, I want to wipe out all the humans. The vampires, because <laughs> I can do that. What's the point of that? You won't even be alive, mate, so what's the point? You didn't think Jackal's working with Saren when in actual fact, he's going behind Saren's back. And he helps Ali free herself. Saren and Jackal fight, and then Zip comes in and shoots the bastard. We find out that his blood may actually be the cure because he was experimented in Eden. The suspense of Zeke dying is over. So they return with the cure to the prince, the prince is all happy. Then Zeke and Ali plan to go to Eden, but they don't want to tell Jack. Dick leads Zeke to Zaren. And it ends with Ali having to hear Zeke's goodbye and being tortured by Zaren. Ends with Zaren's point of view. Oh my gosh, what is gonna happen in Forever Song? Give me Forever Song right now. I do not want to wait here. Did Zaren turn Zeke a vampire? Can Jackal really be trusted? If you have read the Eternity Cure, let me know your thoughts. What do you think's gonna happen in the Forever Song? I have, like I said before, I don't know. I just, I just want to know. It's the end from my Eternity Cure book talk. I hope you enjoyed it. To check out more book talks, just head to my channel. I'm Miranda. See ya.